Hello everybody. My name is Daniel Silascu and together with my colleagues Yuan Law and Benjamin Byers, I had a look on the impact of decoupling gaze and travel direction in seated and ground-based virtual reality utilizing torso-directed steering. Travel, or better steering methods in VR, are often gaze or head directed when an HMD is used. And while being different to reality, it actually works quite well. One reason might be that in first-person video games it has always worked like that because there is technically no difference between the head and the body. Now, as we already mentioned, that's different in reality and we actively make use of body-directed travel. We also know this in VR and it's called torso-directed steering. In this family of steering method, the torso or hips are somehow tracked and the virtual movement happens in the forward direction of it, independently from the viewing direction. So the question is, why is torso-directed steering used less often than other techniques while being obviously more realistic? As usual, it will have something to do with the cost-benefit ratio and we will talk about the costs later. First, we try to answer if there are actually benefits for instance on performance, presence or cyber sickness, and if there are, how do they look? When asking the literature, there is work from Bowman, Zuma and von Capri tackling this question, but their research focus usually was another and thus they found mixed results. So let's see if we can bring some light into the darkness. We concentrated on ground-based scenarios and you might agree that controlling more than one degree of rotational freedom with your torso is a whole nother story and maybe also not arguably natural anymore. For our initial evaluation we also restricted the scenario to the user being seated on a swivel chair. We just had to start with sitting or standing and decided for going seated first. As a side note, Reasons pro and contra seated VR were just discussed last weekend in our workshop. You might want to have a glance on it. Let's have a look on the conditions we evaluated. Going from classic video gaming, where the travel platform usually is the same as a camera platform, one possible transformation to VR is to keep it the same. And we get gaze-directed steering. However, we also have the possibility to include a virtual body that rotates independently from the head, maybe because we actually want to display a consistent virtual body in VR. This virtual body could also be a vehicle, such as an office desk. In this work, however, we used a neutral green arrow above the subject's head. So this in sum leads to the following conditions we tested. Gaze directed, torso directed, and let's call it virtual body or pointer directed steering, where the last two allow for freely looking around independently from the direction of travel and the first does not. So that's about the direction. But additionally, we also expected that the motor component of the travel technique also has an impact on the question if the ability of looking around is beneficial or not. We especially expected a difference between already embodied interfaces here leaning, and joystick or controller-based interfaces. Therefore, we crossed all conditions with this second factor. So here's a shortened list of things we expected to show up. First, we expected that the ability to look around leads to more efficiency when it is a relative motion task. This would show up in torso and pointer directed steering. Second, we expected that moving around with your own physical body, this means torso directed, generates more environmental awareness than gaze directed at the other end. Third, we expected that with the number of body cues also the level of spatial awareness increases, which leads to torso directed leaning should work the best. Fourth, we expected torso-directed leaning having also the highest hedonic quality, which just means it feels the best. Here's the within subject study design. We put 25 subjects into six different randomly generated Roman non-branching temple mazes, which they had to travel along and at the end had to answer where they started. On their way through the streets, they had to collect coins in the alleys 
which was rated to be their highest priority task. But let's just look on some moving pictures. First, we can see the training level, where the participants had the opportunity to train every method as long as they wanted before starting an actual run. Here you can watch a user collecting a coin by looking at it. In the first set of methods, the actual travel speed is given by a joystick and the direction of travel in, the, in this first case by the user's gaze or head direction. In the second of three methods in the first set, the travel direction instead is given by the user's torso. Last, the direction is given by a virtual pointer or body in form of a green arrow. The orientation of the arrow is manipulated with the gamepad. In the second set of methods, the travel speed is given by the degree of leaning of the user's upper body. In this first method, the direction is again given by the head direction. In the second, it's again the user's torso determining the direction of travel. And last but not least, it is the green arrow again, which now is turned by looking into the intended direction. Let's come to the results and start with the task performance, where we measured completion time on the left and travel distance on the right. On the x-axis there are the different pairs of conditions listed and the y-axis give, gives us the numbers in seconds or in meters. The white and dotted part of the bars show something close to a perfect run, where we ran with maximum speed from the start to the end without collecting any coins to give you a relation. Therefore the first thing we notice is that the impact on the time was much higher than on the distance traveled indicating that people ran slower or stopped to collect the coins. Fun fact, there was actually one participant who almost made it in perfect time through the mazes, showing that it was theoretically possible to collect all the coins without reducing speed when using a decoupled method. Another side note is that surprisingly the subjects listened to us and only 0.14% of the coins were missed Thus, we can ignore errors in our evaluation. So, we expected the torso and pointer directed methods to work the best. And that worked out. You should shout no! And you are right, there is one exception. Pointer directed leaning. And actually, we also expected this to happen, but leave it out here. The reason for this in short is and you find more details on this in the paper, that the orientation of the virtual pointer or body in this method was also controlled by looking around and this massively interacted with the ability to look around. However, especially this combination of methods worked out for us in the past and other scenarios and thus we tested it, expecting that it will fail in this scenario and this will show up in more results. So, excluding this method, we were able to confirm our initial hypothesis. Please look up the exact numbers and significancy levels in the paper. Second, we had a look on the environmental awareness and we measured it by counting the collisions with the environment, where the y-axis in this case gives the mean total numbers of collisions per condition. Here we almost exactly found what we expected. That means torso directed provoked the least amount of collisions and gaze directed the most. Next we had a look at the spatial orientation and listed here is the absolute orientation arrow in degree the participants made. And between the conditions we found no difference. However, we still think that there is a difference or more precise a benefit in more embodied interfaces as also reported in related work. But we noticed that the task may have been too difficult and people were forced to guess when they had no idea, which may have fade away possible effects. So we got some feelings, but the variance was just too high. Last but not least, we had a look at the user experience in form of a user experience questionnaire or more precise, its short form. 
The figure shows from left to right the pragmatic quality dotted, the hedonic quality striped and the overall score of the questionnaire for all pairs of conditions. Not surprising, the participants rated the gamepad conditions with the highest pragmatic quality, but torso directed leaning played in the same class. Additionally, torso directed leaning was also rated with the highest hedonic quality, confirming our last hypothesis, resulting also in some in the highest user experience. One interesting observation we made in interviews after the study that matches here was that people actually felt the pointer directed gamepad method to be much closer to the feeling of a first person video game than the gaze directed, which surprised us, but shows also in its hedonic quality. It was not very exciting to use this already known method. So let's finally sum up what we found. First, Yes, the ability of freely looking around in VR next to being more realistic can also be helpful. Second, things that work in separate and in other scenarios do not necessarily work in combination. The best example is pointer directed leaning. Torso directed steering works together with a controller and leaning. Together with leaning it forms up a nice package that feels good. But wait, there was something else. The costs. We wanted to talk about the costs. Are there extra costs? What are they? And how expensive does it get? First, we need an extra tracker. More gear is never good. Second, the system should be wireless to allow unrestricted turning. Last and often forgot is additional calibration, more possible connection problems and so on. So it is, I would say, as cheap as never before, but it still has its price. So what are the limits of our work and what is possible future work? First, are the findings we made transferable also to a standing scenario and what are the differences? Second. How do the tested methods compare to pointing directed methods, which are somehow like our virtual body or pointer directed method, but with direct manipulation? And last, what about further variables like presence and cyber sickness? Because of the amount of conditions, we only had a first look into those. The code and all sources to run the experiment are freely accessible on GitHub and the full video you can watch on YouTube. If you are further interested in more seated stuff, also visit our workshop page. Now, thank you for your virtual attention.